TTCF shareholders, Elf, Honest, Oatly, all you guys, uh, this is the video for you here tonight, okay? This is a reaction video to me going to Target and sh showing you exactly what I'm seeing out there, uh, at least on the West Coast, when it comes to shelf space, um, what's going on. I took pictures of everything, and I want to show you guys kind of what's going on with that. Before that, we're going to get into essentially why each of these stock prices are the way they are. And um, I want to kind of explain that because each of these companies has different Difficult, uh, different problems, different opportunities, and uh, reasons they're at certain share prices. I want to give my perspective on that in, in today's video. Now, this is a very different video for this channel because usually it's a reaction to a video and me giving my opinion on somebody else's opinion. But today's a reaction to going to the to the store, so a little different here. But I didn't know I didn't know where to put this video to be honest because I'm like I'm not going to put this on the main channel because it's not like a big enough video to put on the main channel, and plus it'd be really a weird video to put on the main channel like that's usually talking about the markets and really in depth in, in terms of that and and so yeah it seemed like the the reaction channel is the most uh accurate fit for this one so uh yeah i appreciate everyone that's joined and uh 18,700 plus subscribers now at this point in time my goodness that's a holy smoke this ain't no joke so thank you everybody that subscribed to the channel appreciate each and every one of you as always okay so before we sh uh, show you all these different pictures of of everything i took here and kind of what's going on as far as uh, product placement in these stores and things like that let's spend a moment just talking about why these stocks are priced the way they are uh we'll start right off the bat with honest why is honest a three dollar stock here today right Honest is a $3 stock because this is a stock that never got to build out a shareholder base. They went public about <clears throat> roughly about halfway through 2021 when the retail hype and excitement was already dying and Wall Street money wasn't really looking for new stocks at that particular time. And then they go into this year, which this is a sell everything at all costs year, right? So they never got to build a strong shareholder base at this company. They have lost money on their bottom line, which means no one on Wall Street wants to put any money into this one right now. And when you don't have a, a strong shareholder base built and you go into an incredibly weak market where the NASDAQ goes down to something like 35% or so, you know, this year. And at one point it was down like 38% from the highs, right? When you go into that sort of year, you know, your stock stands no chance. That's why that's a $3 stock here today, um, just to be quite honest. And that's kind of what's been going on with, with uh, Honest there, okay? Why is Elf a $50 stock here today? Elf is a $50 stock here today because Elf is a company that has executed for several years in a row. Going into 2019, there was a lot of questions about where Elf's future was going. And a lot of people looked at Elf and they, they thought this is just a, a, a Dunzo stock. This is going to be one of those you know stocks that's five, ten bucks forever, essentially, right? And what I saw was a company that was completely changing their brand into a much healthier space. They were a company that was hit with a bunch of problems in the short term. They were going to get over that. And um, I saw them using influencers and for the marketing and you know partnering with some massive influencers. And I was like, this company is going to completely change their brand. And so they did that. They executed. And the thing about Elf is they proved... You know, they built their business from there in 2019. Then they go into 2020. All of a sudden, the whole world shuts down. All of a sudden, there's not as much of a need for makeup products because now people aren't really going out. They're not doing stuff. They're not going to the office. They're not going to concerts and this and that. So the need for cosmetics went down massively, right? And Elf made it through that storm. And they've built their business and just continue to grow and grow and grow in a phenomenal place. Now, on top of that, and this is very important, and wait till you see what I'm going to show you in, in the pictures here in regards to Elf. But the important thing with Elf, and I, I talked about this all the way back when I was first getting in this stock at the end of 2018, beginning of 2019. I spoke about this. What did I tell you about Elf? I told you this is a company that regardless of the economic environment, they will thrive. And the reason is they have some of the most high quality products you will ever find out there. And they're at price points that are among the cheapest in the cosmetics industry. So when you can provide great products for way underpriced compared to any of your competitors, you're going to thrive in any economic conditions. And if things get tight and people can't spend as much money. They don't stop wearing makeup. They spend less on their makeup. So they will trade down, right? And so they'll go from spending, let's say, $30 or $50 or $80 on some foundation to Elf, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, something like that, right? 
And so this is just a, a huge situation for Elf. It's a company that's been executing on a super high level. They're profitable, and they're actually ones that uh, one of the few companies that benefit in a massive way if people are trading down. Because if money's tight, like I said, people still wear makeup. It's just they uh, they they trade uh, they, they trade down to cheaper products, right? Next one up here, let's talk about the Chef. Why is a Chef a four dollar stock here today? Okay, the Chef's a four dollar stock. Retail got destroyed, first off. So retail has pretty much left this market at this point in time, and this was a big retail stock. It wasn't the biggest by any stretch of the imagination. It was no GameStop. It was no AMC. But this was a big retail stock. Those folks got wrecked, and they left the market. And unfortunately, that left the chef with... Who's left to buy the chef besides me, <laughs> pretty much? So who's left to buy that stock? Big money's not buying the chef right now. That's not the, that's, they're not at a stage yet where they can be Wall Street money can, can, can come to this stock. Next year, that's a whole different situation. In 2024, whole different situation. But right now, no. Well, this is not a Wall Street stock. This is a retail stock, and retail left the market. Now, the other thing that's important around the chef is a lot of people are like, well, what's, what's the future of the chef? Because this was a super high growth company, right, that had this incredible revenue growth. But then all of a sudden, the market completely switches on us, right? And now all of a sudden, no one cares about revenue growth. It's about margins. It's about cash flow. It's about profitability. Well, the chef doesn't have cash flows. The chef doesn't have margins. The chef doesn't have profitability. So the market switched to a complete way, different, different way of valuing stocks that a company like the chef wasn't prepared for, right? And so that left the chef in this situation where it's like, okay, and shareholders kind of in this situation where like, okay, wait, I got into this because it was high growth, but now they're not going to be high growth and they're going to start to focus on margins and profitability and these sorts of things, right? So that leads in, in this weird kind of limbo state, right? And now the company is in a position where for the next year they have to, they have to show that margins are increasing, increasing for the next year to two, and they have to get their cash flows in a much better place and to get to profitability. And uh, that's a very different dynamic. So now they have to fight this new uphill battle, which their old uphill battle was revenue growth. Now it's all about margins, cash flows, and profitability for this company, right? So that's why that one's a $4 stock here today. And the last one up here uh, that we're, you know I'm going to show you pictures and, and talk about here is Oatly. Oatly ain't no jokely. Where's that at? Dollar ninety nine. Oh my gosh, you got to be kidding me. So Oatly, why is it two bucks? Let's just call it that. Oatly's a two dollar stock because it was another one of those stocks that it's not really a Wall Street stock. It was a, more of a retail stock, if you can even call it that. Never even remotely as close to as popular as a stock like the Chef, for instance, right? But it was one of those sorts of stocks. And the problem with Oatly, the price of oats went to ridiculous levels. You know, uh, let me show you how insane it got for the price of oats because I actually have that on my commodities I care about list uh, essentially here, okay? And oats, there we go. So let me show you oats for the past five years, okay? This is oats. This is the normal price of oats. This is where oats should be priced, okay? Oats, like, tripled up in a snap of fingers. Literally, oats like tripled up in a snap of a fingers, okay? And it stayed like that for like a year, okay? Now, very recently, oat price has come down massively, and it's getting closer to where it should be, and it will likely go to where it should be, okay? So this is something that will benefit Oatly in a huge way in 2023, but this is a thing that devastated them in 2022, Oat price, when, when it goes up like that, like Oatly's margins are going to deteriorate massively. There's Every company, including Oatly, is dealing with a million other problems with inflation. But when you have the main ingredient that goes into your product triple up in a snap of fingers, you're done in, in terms of the short term for your margins, your profitability, your cash flows, everything. Now, Oatly was also spending a ton of money building out factories at the same time. So they get margins destroyed. While they're, you know, also having to deal with energy costs going up massively, while they're spending a ton of money on new factories and scaling production, which everybody that knows anything about scaling production of facilities is extremely expensive, and you put all that onto a company that doesn't have a real sh strong shareholder base, isn't a Wall Street stock, and the folks that were in it from the retail side are long gone, you go to two dollars. That's what happens, okay? And so although, yeah, they got a lot of money, uh, cash on the balance sheet, they got a really strong brand, they got expansion of products around the world and all those sorts of things, 2022 has put Oatly in the worst situation possible. And remember, for much of 2022 until recently, like the last few months, 
Uh, remember what transportation cost did? It skyrocketed. And obviously, when you're sending containers of oat milk around, it's not the cheapest thing to send around, right? Which is another thing that devastated margins. So Oatly just got hit with the perfect storm. The perfect storm of everything going wrong that could possibly have gone wrong for Oatly went wrong in 2022. I don't think uh, 2023 will be that like that for this company at all. And I think it will be brighter days ahead. But 2022 has been a year to forget. That's how you go to two bucks. That's how you become a two buck Chuck stock. Have everything work against you and you never had a shareholder base that was strong to begin with. You'll be two bucks. Okay. All right, guys. Hope you enjoy this as always here. Uh, by the way, once a year, Black Friday sale coming up for the private stock group. And uh, if you want to get on the email list for that, we'll send you over the email. Okay. So honest first off here this was looking at the wipes area this is a this is a target in arizona i went to the, the closest one to me this is a super target so they have more product than an average target let's just put it that way and so Oatly, i mean Oatly, uh, honest obviously has several different white products so those are honest 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 these are both honest there and then uh, honest wipes there. Uh, as far as baby wipes go, this Millie Moon company, they, they seem like they're the closest, I guess you can say kind of competitor to honest. It just seems like they're kind of a, a much smaller brand, but they do. I see a lot of times this Millie Moon is next to honest products. So it seems like they try to compete um, against kind of an honest there. Okay. It seems like they're more direct comp competitors than like Honest is competing with like Pampers or Huggies or something like that. Like Huggies and Pampers and Loves, they compete directly against each other, whereas it feels more like Honest and Millie Moon compete directly against each other, right? Um, as far as this goes here, this just shows you, I think these are, so these are the ones that, you know, you put on your kids when they're still like trying to potty train or something like that, right? Nighttime kind of underwear type deals. And uh, obviously big section for Honest there. Uh, this is an entire Honest section of like different wipes, you know, shampoos, soaps, um, you know, different lotions and all. I mean, look at this section. It is not small. It is not small by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, it's just phenomenal to kind of see this. And, you know, when it comes to Honest, they seem to just continue to expand their shelf space and, uh, you know, bring more more product in. And, you know, Target's been a partner for Honest for several years now. So as the relationships built over the years, Honest has gotten more and more and more shelf space in uh, Target stores. And what I think is going to play out is as they get into more and more retailers, and specifically the big dogs, Walmart, is they'll get in with certain products and they'll expand those products over time as long as they sell well. And I think they will continue to sell well and uh, probably actually much better uh, than even in the past as the brand gets bigger and bigger and more popular. So now this is a, uh, another area where honest diapers are in general, which they have a major diaper business and they are somebody that has taken market share over time. By the way, remember that Millie Moon company that I mentioned about that, you know, seems like kind of the competitor to honesty, the, the products right, right next to each other. As far as that goes, uh, this was a nice end cap at the uh, Target store of Honest, so wipes, wipes, uh, those are, should be wipes there as well, and then a uh, diaper section here. So obviously phenomenal to see that. Um, and there is another Honest picture I do have, and that is right here, and that's their little kind of makeup section, let's call it that. And this is a very exciting opportunity. So, you know, the, their shelf space they have here is very similar to what Elf had when I first started investing in Elf in, um, you know, the end of 2018, beginning of 2019. And so, you know, it's not a realm possibility to imagine that Honest builds this out much bigger over the coming years. They're still kind of a baby in this category, and I'm really excited, <clears throat> you know, to see kind of where they take this. And the great thing is, you know, Honest has what a lot of people consider definitely one of the most uh, attractive females of the last, you know, 20 or 30 years uh, in, in Jessica Alba as the one that runs this company, right? Well, she doesn't really run the company anymore. She's, you know, Nick runs this company, but she has a huge influence still on this business. And, you know, she's very associated with the marketing and things like that. And I think that's um, awesome. I think if you're going to sell makeup products, I think 
you know, it's kind of cool to have Jessica Alba as uh, the one that helps you sell the products because I don't think she needs a lot of makeup to look uh, fairly decent, right? So th that's pretty powerful when you got somebody that famous that's, you know, backing your brand there. And so, yeah, this is a, this is a product category that's going to be incredibly profitable uh, for Honest over the coming years. Now, it seems like what I'm seeing from Honest's pricing is they definitely seem higher priced than like an Elf. But they're not, you know, they're no Estee Lauder or some, you know, Clinique or some, you know, insane pricing like that or something like that. So they seem to be kind of that, that happy medium. And uh, I think the margins are going to be incredible. I don't think the, mar the margins will be incredible in this product category as they get bigger and bigger. And if you're thinking about this business versus like diapers and wipes and things like that, like diapers and wipes are cool. But that's much more competitive in terms of margins than like the makeup business. That's, that's you know, like night and day, okay? You know, I don't own Fresh Pet stock. I just thought I would show you guys this. This has been a stock that, you know, over the years has done pretty well. And they have these basically fridges that are in, I think it's just about every single Target store. And what I've always seen when I go buy these fridges is the product moves like really well. I mean, I, I go by these fridges and a lot of times they're empty or they're partially empty. And Fresh Pet's a stock that has done tremendous over the years. And I remember looking at Fresh Pet, looking into this company years ago. And back then I was kind of like, I don't know about this one, you know, in, ter in terms of like, because they were a money loser back when I first looked into this company. And I thought, okay, it's so cool that they got these fridges that are going in all these Target stores. And, you know, it's so cool that, you know, they got this refrigerated dog food and cat food and stuff like that that people love. But it was it was a huge money loser when I looked into the company. And the stock certainly has come down a lot. But you still pull up, you know, a five-year chart of this one. It's still up 279%. And I was looking into this one back in like, it's probably like 2016, somewhere around there you know, maybe 2017, 2016, 2017. And, you know, if we go back to that time period, the stock's up 600 plus percent. But back then there was a lot of question marks around this company. And it was a stock that was under $10. It was one of those kind of forgotten about stocks, right? Here, $7, $4, $5. You know, back in 2016, 2017, it was a huge money loser. A lot of people didn't understand the business or if they were going to make it and things like that and so it was like a four dollar stock six dollar stock eight dollar stock for quite a while and obviously they proved that you know their business could work they could you know get to to really impressive numbers over time and the stock obviously went to where the stock went it's down massively from where it was but uh you know it it's still the ridiculous returns since that time time period essentially. So actually an impressive company, and uh, I've been you know impressed what they pulled off over the years in in terms of their stock price and their business in general. Oatly, I just took this photo of Oatly products at uh, the Target store, the Oatly shelf there. Chef, man, get ready to get your flapjacks flipped here with the chef. Okay, so this is the start of it. You might think that that must be all the products. No. This is just a star, okay? This is a bunch of their different breakfast products that they have um, in in this Target store here. What else are in? Charo's Bowl, Griddle Pancake Breakfast Bowl, um, Breakfast Sausage, Plant-Based Sausage Bowl there, uh, Plant-Based Bacon Breakfast Bowl as well. So that's their breakfast section. Awesome. And remember, the chef was non-existent in Target stores two years ago. Non-existent. And what I'm showing you here is shocking to see how much they've expanded in two years, in two flipping flapjacking years, okay? So this is a, another area where you can buy like, kind of like sides you might make with your dinner or something like that. Mexican style street corn, organic rice, cauliflower stir fry, zucchini spirals. And here this is like, I think it's like broccoli and Brussels sprout uh, mixture or something there in terms of that product thing. This is our main section of the products that really, really move crazy volume, right? And this is what I, I eat almost every single day. You know, one of these different types of products. They got everything from their, par uh, their, their harvest bowls, their hemp bowl, which is phenomenal. That, that's funny. I, when I first tried that, I wasn't the biggest fan. Now it's like one of my favorite products from them. They got their plant-based burrito bowls. Uh, I think they ran out of their plant-based uh, chicken burrito bowls that usually go there. 
cauliflower mac and cheese. This one I love. I, I know a lot of people don't like that one. Personally, I like it a lot. The buffalo cauliflower mac and cheese bowl. Buddha bowl. Buddha bowl is another example of one I didn't like at first, and now I freaking love that thing. Like, literally, this and the hemp bowl are they're like my two go-tos now. It's just so funny how time changes. They got their quesadillas. They got their burritos there. And then they even got shelf space over here with their teriyaki bowls, enchilada bowls, uh, pizza bowls. And, uh, oh, here's a plant-based chicken burrito bowl as well. And, I mean, you look at... Purple carrot's supposed to be their main competitor, right? Do I need to say anything? Uh, you know, you guys are smart enough to kind of, you know, you guys are highly intelligent. I think you can tell what's going on there, okay? Who's winning that battle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it ain't even a close fight. Hey, that ain't even a close fight. Let's just call it that. This is a pizza area for uh, Tattoo Chef. So they got a few different pizzas. They got this this one. I couldn't wait to try this. I actually did try it tonight. It was very good. Uh, I was excited for that one. Rainbow, this is called Rainbow, Rainbow State Plant-Based Pizza. So, hey, you know, interesting name, but that was actually really good. Uh, they got their two cheese pizza and their pepperoni pizza that you might see at many different stores out there. So they're obviously competing in the uh, pizza space. Then they had these products here which is their uh, cauliflower spaghetti. And then their, this one's so good. I feel like a lot of people don't give this one a chance. And this is like, this, this is one of my favorite products from that man. And a lot of people don't give that one a chance. I'm just like, y'all missing out, whatever, whatever. So that's chef. I mean, you guys could count up how many SKUs that was. It was ridiculous. And, and like I said, two years ago, this company is non-existent. No one ever knew Tattoo Chef two years ago. And to see them have that many products in a Target store, nowadays is is insane and keep in mind it is, is it is it is a super target so it's a much bigger version of a target than you know a normal target but still like that many products in there it's incredible absolutely incredible so very happy with that okay uh this was honest we already talked about that look at this photo holy smoke is this ain't no joke okay look at this look at this look at this this is the elf section in this target i mean look at that beauty oh, it's beautiful it's absolutely beautiful. Incredible. And I mean, this is one of the best feelings of investing. The money's cool. The money's cool, man. It really is. And, and you know, when you make tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, or maybe potential mi millions on a stock, it's a good feeling. But I think this is an even cooler feeling. Because when I invest in Elf, they had like three feet of space. In most Target stores, there are maybe six feet. And then I walk in, and you see this nowadays. I mean, look at that. Just look at it. Oh my gosh. It's beautiful. It's incredible. Lovely. Lovely. I mean, just <sighs> awesome, man. I took this photo because this actually particular target has uh, Ulta in it. So they just built out this new Ulta store. And I don't know if anybody owns Ulta stock out there. Probably not. Uh, but Ulta is actually a good company. And they're actually building out these uh, stores inside of Target stores, essentially, which I think is a pretty good idea for both companies uh, as far as all that goes. Okay. Uh, this is another honest. Sec oh, no, no. So now we're at Fry's. So now from there, I went over to Fry's, which this was like a uh, Fry's marketplace. So it's like a bigger version of, of normal Fry's. And what we saw here is Fry's even carries Honest, uh, which, by the way, Fry's is owned by Kroger, if you didn't know. So, yeah, it was crazy to see wipes even there. And they got actually a pretty nice diaper section at this Fry's as well. I was actually impressed. I was like, wow, that's cool to see Honest already getting in, in, in there as well. That's, that's, that's awesome, man. I love it. And they actually had some of these products as well. Obviously, Fry's is not even going to be remotely close to the type of volume mover for a company like Honest versus, uh, you know, somebody like Target. I mean, it's like night and day, right? But I mean, it's still, at the end of the day, people buy these sorts of products at Fry's and Honest has got to be there if they want to build market share and build their brand bigger. You got to be where people shop. You know, a lot more people shop at, at Target for these sorts of products, obviously, diapers and all this stuff than, than, than Fry's, but... You know, you got to be, you got to be places. That's bottom line. Okay. You know, it does sell very well at Fry's is food because it's a food store. Okay. And look at this. So four different pizzas here. You got the plant-based vegetable pizza from the chef there. You got a plant-based two cheese pizza there. You got the cauliflower crust, uh, plant-based pepperoni pizza there. And then you have a regular cheese pizza there. So four different pizza skews. Awesome. Awesome to see. Okay. Next up here. Why do they got to put stuff in front of my products? Get it out of the way, man. 
get it out of the way, please. Like, like, don't be blocking my view of the chef products. Like, move that thing. I don't care if you put it in front of the turkey sausage thing that no one buys or you put it over here in front of this thing. Get it out of my products. I need people to see the chef, man. Okay? Shout, you know, shout out to the fries workers out there. There's probably no one watching this video right now that works at fries, but speak to somebody, okay? I don't need this stuff blocking the chef, okay? Quesadilla's there. Barrito's there. Next up here, quit it. Quit it. Is blocking again. A hiring sign? Seriously? What, 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 maybe I'll get a job there. Thinking about it now. We're fresh for everyone. That means to join our team. Next day pay? Oh, shoot. If I get next day pay, I could like put the money in the chef immediately versus have to wait. Up to 21000 in tuition reimbursement? Wow. Competitive wages and benefits? Discounts on our brands? Android and iOS technology? <laughs> Streaming services? That's kind of funny. <laughs> what? Okay. Somebody talk to the folks at Kroger. Quit blocking my stuff. I don't want this QR code. I don't want this higher sign. I don't want whatever the bowl covers. Come on, man. Who the, no one's freaking buying these bowl covers. Get this bull crap out of here, man. People need to see the chef products. Look at this. Chef, 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 chef. You know I mean? There's chef everywhere. There's chef overtime. Look at this. You, do you even think like chef was in this store two years ago? No, no. Come on, man. And look at this. It's incredible. I had to open the door because this stupid thing is blocking it. Somebody talk to somebody about this, man. We got to get this fixed. Come on. <sighs> Finally, it is not getting blocked. Um, so this is uh, their six SKUs they have in this particular store in regards to this. They got the cauliflower cheese or mac and cheese bowl. They got the pizza bowl. They got the Buddha bowl. They got the plant-based burrito bowl. They got the veggie hemp bowl. They got the enchilada bowl as far as that goes there. Then this was actually, look at how big the elf section is at this fry store. Once again, I'm sure not as nearly as many people buy makeup at Fry's and that they, man, you know, Target, for instance, is like night and day. But still, it's amazing. Uh, it's, it's awesome to see that sort of, because at the end of the day, people still do buy makeup at Fry's. And it's phenomenal to see that big of a section of Fry's stores. It's amazing. I love it, love it, love it. What did I buy from Target? I'll show you what I bought from Target. I bought my Rainbow State plant-based pizza which i did like that that was good and I, I i've never that's the first chef pizza i've liked i don't like their other pizzas i've tried them all this is the first one i've tried that i actually like that was a good one i would like buy that again i got my the most underrated chef product out there in my opinion you know throw some oil in a pan cook up that nice and slow let it simmer oh man a little salt and pepper on top mm, just perfect john okay i bought uh, my wife some foundation because she you know she was talking she said i need some foundation and i said baby um you know we can't do that estee lauder no 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 you know it's been a rough year in the market i don't know if you heard the rumor on the street but it's been a rough year in the market and the, like no we can't afford those expensive brands right now we go elf on a shelf okay and 11 dollar foundation that's going to do the trick we know it's quality okay and then i bought myself this honest cream here because you know, it's, it's a stressful life, man. It's a stressful life. You gotta understand every year, my net worth's moving millions. This year it's moved down several million, right? Every year it's millions. And in the future it's gonna be tens of millions. And in the future it's gonna be hundreds of millions of dollars my net worth is moving on a yearly basis. And so a man's gotta stay looking decent out here. And uh, so I need some I need some honest, man. And, and honestly, maybe it make me look like Jessica Alba. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't complain about that, okay? So that, that's the products I bought out there at the store today, okay? Something to make you laugh a little bit. I don't know if it's laugh or cry, but look at this. The Tyson Foods CFO was arrested for entering a stranger's house and passing out in her bed. I guess he was super intoxicated. What? That's just, like, ridiculous. Like, what? How... how did that even happen? That's just insane. And uh, this comes uh, about a month or two after this Beyond Meat COO did his thing at an Arkansas game. What was going on with these food people? Like, what is going on with them? There's something wrong, okay? And then I got I saw this picture over the weekend on Sarah on Sarah Galetti's uh, Instagram. Sam Galetti, what is he doing? Sam, you can't be out in public looking like that, Sam. What? I don't care if it's your birthday. Come on, man. 
I don't know if you're feeling good about the next year or feeling bad about the next year based upon this Versace looking outfit, sir. Come on, Sam. Come on, man. We gotta do we gotta do better than that, man. It's scaring me, scaring me over here, okay? It's bad enough we felt four bucks. Don't scare me any more than that, man. That's too much. So, anyways, guys, I appreciate you joining me. Thank you, everybody. As always, 18,700 plus subscribers now at this point in time. And, uh, yeah, back to video reactions probably tomorrow. A little bit of a different video here. Appreciate everybody. As always, much love and have a great day. Don't forget, if you want the Black Friday deal for the private stock group to join us in there at Discord chats and everything like that, that will be pinned comment down there. And we'll send you over the deal when it drops on Black Friday. Peace.